Just to introduce myself, uh, my work is sort of twofold. I help individuals and couples who want to navigate health and the emotional impacts of the menopause. And secondly, I like to get this support out to the public by workplace trainings about menopause and making sure that companies have got the right focus on women's health. It's really, really great to hear, Kathy, that your university is doing so much. It's so refreshing to hear. Um, I don't hear too many stories like that, so I'm really happy to hear that. Um, and also, I'd like to see them set in the right policies, the ones that you mentioned, that um, in your workplace are empowering the female workforce to feel supported and confident as they go through all stages in, in the female journey, basically, from menstruation to menopause, because let's face it, we've all had to deal with the stigma even of periods and all the way through to uh, menopause. And there is a strong business case um, for menopause training. The top five areas that menopause can affect women in the workplace is uh, physical fatigue, mental fatigue, which means lack of concentration, um, brain fog, the immense um, onset of short-term memory loss, hot flushes, insomnia, anxiety and loss of confidence again Kathy that you mentioned and this excessive worry that can come over you it's a natural process that's going to happen to 100% of women it's easily misdiagnosed it's misunderstood and it's sometimes misidentified um, one area I'm just going to talk about the impact of is um, sleep um, so in my one-to-one -one work I did help a lady go from literally two hours of sleep to eventually eight hours of sleep she would literally fall asleep at um, 10 um, o'clock 10 and be awake at midnight all the way through to 6 a.m. and feel tired again when it was time to wake up. Luckily, through some lifestyle changes and also a small herbal supplement, I'm, I'm very lucky to find a company that does back up its supplementation with science and they can identify where their raw materials come from because as we know the supplement industry isn't regulated so it is important to get the right supplements um, and we did get asleep into eight hours but everybody knows that debilitating effect okay um, Michelle's experience she was walking around like a zombie if anyone any man any woman has a bad night's sleep whether that be from going out or getting, a, you know, one of the flights which puts you in a different time zone and you come back, you're completely groggy, your mood is low, you can't concentrate on reading, going to a meeting feels like torture, you know, and all you want to do really at some point in the day, you just want to curl up and go to sleep. And then you reach for sugary foods, unhelpful foods, because you crave them, because your body's craving you to stay awake. Um, so this, you know, it, you can easily see why sleep deprivation was used as torture and more because your body needs sleep, it needs to recuperate, your brain needs to rest and reset for the next day. And if you're doing this week in, week out, you can imagine the effect at work, especially if you're operating heavy machinery. So it's a really unsafe way to be. Um, just one night's bad sleep can do that, and women are suffering this day to day. Um, but how confident are you to tell your manager, you know, more needs to be done. We know that one in three women are not competent to tell their manager, you know, and, and employers are losing one in six people due to lack of support. Many people, many women are too frightened to speak out and often they'll mask. Um, women are very good at masking. And that brings me back um, to my story a little bit because I knew I was in the menopause, really in the menopause during lockdown when the night sweats came. But really, I could take it all the way back to 2017 when I had an underactive thyroid disease. But if I'm truly honest about focusing on my health even before then, in 2011, when I was about 37, 38, I had chronic um, fatigue syndrome. I was not um, burning out. I was burnt out. So the medical reports and a DNA report showed that I was literally burnt out. I had complete adrenal fatigue. Um, so back then I was looking to uh, cognitive behavioural therapy. I was, my anxiety state was so high, literally seeing my own shadow on a wall would make me literally jump. Somehow I was masking it and going to work. I was dragging my feet into work, doing a day's work, putting on a face, being 
normal, whatever that means, and then coming home crashing and most evenings I'll just be crying. Um, I'm wondering how I'm going to now have that same energy to do it again the next day. And it was exhausting, even though um, all the time inside I was trembling internally. And for anyone who had a keen eye, I was trembling externally, but nobody sort of said anything. Um, so then I really became a shadow of myself. My family were very concerned for me. Um, my, I lost some very good sort of childhood friends because they didn't know how to handle me because I became a completely different person. Um, and I started to self-medicate on highly palatable food. And that's when the weight really piled on. And I just wasn't myself anymore. I was in a, a rocky relationship and it was getting rockier because of the way I was. I was unhappy with myself. Um, I didn't know what was going on. Um, I was engaged um, and in 2016 the engagement broke down. So by that stage I thought right I really need to go and see the doctor. You know the doctor didn't put it down to anything hormonal. I was still having periods so why would they you know. And that's what I wanted to talk about today a little bit as well. It's not an age thing because the menopause can hit you at any age. In fact, the lead up, the perimenopause, is the lead up to menopause, which is the day you actually realise you haven't had a period for a year and then you're in postmenopause after that. But the lead up can be anything from 10 to 15 years ahead of time. And I feel it's really important to speak to younger women about this message. The more that we can do for younger women, the more that we can support them. I had no idea this anxiety, this complete loss of confidence, this turning into a shell of myself was anything hormonal and nobody else did as well. It didn't trigger any sort of uh, message that something was going on. After the um, engagement broke down, I went to the doctor and they realised that I pro probably had been living with an underactive thyroid for quite some time. Um, I like to do things naturally. Luckily, I had a very understanding doctor. It was in the days when you could just go and rock up and get a blood test. So um, for me, I refused thyroxine. I'm not saying there's no place for medicine. There certainly is. And if, if this didn't work, I would have taken the medication. But um, he printed off six months worth of blood tests. He monitored me all the way through. And I went down the natural route and started, and this was like the start of really looking at my own health. Like um, at that time, I wasn't studying nutrition, but I looked at my own health and saw what I could do for myself. In my mind, my thyroid had gone to sleep, is how simply I could put it. I wanted to wake it up, so I knew I had to get back into the gym, not to do crazy stuff, just to do really short, sharp bursts of exercise to wake my thyroid up. I knew I had to change my diet. I had to take away all the inflammatory foods, you know, the simple sugars, the sort of um, uh, simple carbohydrates made with flour and stuff. Um, and so I did eliminate a lot of things from my diet, which I have subsequently reintroduced. But at that time, I just needed to fix this thyroid and I used homeopathy as well um, and that worked within eight months my numbers started to slowly come down and within eight months my numbers were actually in the normal range for um, for my thyroid so I was really pleased my doctor was actually really surprised I was totally disciplined the weight took a lot longer to come off um, but obviously within the eight months I was and then I had a, a spike like two months after that and I know that if I sort of do go off track with my own personal um, health and um, my lifestyle, then it can easily get off track. But touch wood, it's been since um, since February 2018, it, it has been OK. And then lockdown here and I started to get those debilitating nights where it's literally waking up every two hours um, with the with the night sweats. And now um, I was able to now study nutrition deeply and also menopause. And basically, I sort of coach women to look after themselves from a gut health point of view, because a uh, little did I know I was actually supporting my gut with the stuff I was doing to heal my, my thyroid anyway. So um, so then I learned, OK, that's what I did. That's what helped me to actually heal things, because now science is linking the gut to every facet of health. It's, it's, it's deeply rooted. There's a huge sleep connection. Can't go into it now, but there's a massive sleep connection about how we metabolise serotonin and melatonin through our gut. 
Um, but we, but there is a huge powerful effect of food and mood and eating real foods and healing. So I come to it from that side with, with some help. Sometimes our body does need a little help with some supplementation. So that's what really got me into nutrition heavily and start, and I actually then studied it and then also studied um, the menopause because I was finding women were having similar issues. Um, but bringing it back round to the workplace, there's just a little bit of my history. Like you said, Kathy, men and women are sharing the same workspace, you know, and it's not just a women's issue. You know, men and women who are in same sex relationships, they feel hopeless and helpless not being able to support their partner. They may not have the right access to how to deal with menopause. So that weighs heavy on them that they, they can't do enough to sort of ease the woman's symptoms or help them. So, and also the partner has disturbed sleep because obviously they're also sleeping in the same bed, you know, and then they may be wondering where their relationship is also going due to delicate sexual matters that happened or the strain of menopause um, and also the wild mood swings, which you alluded to as well, Kathy. You know, they often wonder, who am I living with? And um, actually, it's the biggest, the divorce rate within that age bracket. I'm saying age, it's not an age thing, but, you know, in the typical age bracket is where there is a lot of divorce as well, because there is this constant misunderstanding of what's going on. Because don't forget, he could be going through his own midlife crises as well. You know, there is there is a such a thing as andropause. It affects them differently. And there is the menopause. Um, therefore, by default, then it's affecting men. It's affecting men at home and it's affecting men and women in the workplace. That's why I feel education in the workplace is such an obvious place to start because it helps everybody. It helps them at home and it helps them at work. In fact, menopause is going to affect 100% of women at whatever age or stage that they're, that they're going to experience it and at whatever level, because not everybody experience, ex experiences it the same. And 80% of those women are in the workforce. 90% of those women would say that the symptoms negatively affect their um, their work life and that the lack of support also is costing the UK economy and businesses £10 million a year. And 14 million um, workdays are lost due to the menopause. But again, people, women don't feel confident enough to actually give the real reason why they're not having, you know, not going to work. So we need to remove the stigmas. We need to make women feel more supported to enable them to flourish. Because too many menopausal women are hitting menopause right at the time when their careers are going to take off, you know? So they are, they're too many are losing the opportunity to really get to the pinnacle of their career due to lack of support or due to the sudden lack of confidence in their own abilities or unexplained or even acknowledged symptoms. They feel they need to slow down rather than speed up because forgetting that this is a phase of life that they can get through, that they can come out stronger. Um, and it's important, that's really important, you know, no wonder we don't have so many women at the top because at the point of nearly getting there, menopause hits. So, you know, it's something that they can come out stronger, whether they're using HRT or uh, counselling methods or, or anything to get them through that phase that can help them manage the stress levels, manage the cortisol, look after their health, eat in the way that gives them energy rather than saps energy. All those things matter. And HR managers need to take note as well, because although it's not mandatory, mandatory to have a menopause um, policy, it is best practice to be prepared because menopause has been mentioned in tribunal cases now with an increase of 44% um, in 2021, which, in 2022, sorry, which was up from 2021. In 2021, they were one under the discrimination um, umbrella, 16 under disability, 14 under unfair dismissal, and 10 under sexual discrimination. So it's really important that the, you know, the workplace take note of this. The um, Chartered Institute of 
personal de development have said that sadly if you're disabled it's worse because having a disability or a long-term condition can significantly make women feel worse where eight percent of women in that situation have left work and a further one in four are considering it compared to just five percent and 14 percent respectively of those who don't have a disability or a long-term condition added to that 36 percent of women with a disability or long-term health condition say that their symptoms have had a quite a, or negative effect on their career progression compared with 24 of non-disabled women. On top of that, something close to my heart, women of ethnic minority also makes a significant difference. 38% who identify as an ethnic minority say that their symptoms have had a quite or negative effect on their career progression compared to 25% who identify as white. So it, and it's also been recognised that women of colour experience stronger menopause symptoms than those who identify as white, but they are less likely to speak out. That's something close to my heart and I'd really like to see a change in that culture as well. I think that's it for me. Thanks, Scott.